So we've hit an actual 100 degree temperature today. And honestly, it's not too bad. I mean, we're sweating, but Carolyn's still carrying buckets of water down to the garden, you know, one maybe every hour or so to get the plants watered. She did order another hose, that way we can run water down there a little bit more efficiently without using buckets. But for now, she's still using buckets. Uh, we don't have the air conditioner, obviously, but I've said that many times. And in my mind, not having the air conditioner and sitting here enduring the heat is prepping, is being prepared for something that could happen later down the road, the zombie apocalypse, the end of the world kind of scenario. What do they call that? SHTF. Because if everybody loses electric today, nationwide, there will be very few, apparently, that will be able to live through not having air conditioner. Because as many comments as I get telling me you're going to die without air conditioning, well, every day I make a video and I'm still alive without air conditioning. So that tells me that when the air conditioner goes out for you during the SHTF that everybody is preparing for, all these preppers, and trust me, there are a ton of people on this channel watching saying, I'm a prepper, because I, I get the comments all the time. I also know that a lot of my viewers watch prepping channels. And it's not these prepping channels where they say, okay, you need to be prepared for a short-term outage, you know, one, two weeks. These are the preppers that are SHTF, the end of the world. The electric's gonna go down and it's never gonna come back on again. Just get ready for it. You know, that, that kind of prepping mentality. If we were talking about short-term outages, then I would agree with the preppers. Yeah, stockpile what you need, freeze some ice, maybe you can get through the hot temperatures with some ice packs or something, I don't know. But what we're really discussing is, is the macho man who says, I've got enough stockpiled and I'm ready for the end of the world, while he's sitting in his air conditioned house, enjoying a nice glass of tea or Chardonnay or, or whatever it is they're drinking. You know, smoking their cigarettes, those kind of things. I'm not seeing that they're actually prepared. They say they are, and they show this big room with all these supplies. Look at me, I'm gonna last forever. But they've never tested themselves. And I know I bring this up a lot, but it's just incredible how many times I hear people tell me, I'd rather be a prepper than what you're doing. And I just don't think preppers are gonna last as long as me. I'm not trying to brag, but I'm already doing it. So I know that I can last at least two years because that's how long we've lasted already. Now, I understand we go to the grocery store, we buy frozen meats, or we buy meats and freeze them up in our freezer that is ran off the solar panels. I understand that, I get it. But we don't have to. And I'm sh positive, I can prove to you that we don't have to. I've showed you all our canned goods. We got nearly 300 jars of meat. That's one meal per jar. We have eggs coming in every day, 365 days a year, seven days a week, wherever you want to say, that supply us with a good lunch and a, and a nice supper. I feel like that I've already proven that I have deliberately shut myself off of the grid with some minor exceptions that I know I can live without. I have said in the past that yes, we run off a generator. Right now we have a propane generator. We've got several cans of propane that would last us a long time, but I don't have to have it. I've got two jugs of gasoline that would run the other generator if necessary, but I don't have to have it. And the reason, the only reason I really need a generator is right now for the convenience of it. Right now it's just convenient to have the generator. We've got the solar panels that does about 80% of what we need. The biggest problem is, is our refrigerator. If we didn't have the refrigerator, we wouldn't need as much electric. So if something were to happen and we couldn't buy groceries anymore, then I would give up the refrigerator, just shut it off. Now I've got all the stored energy where I can run the well off the solar panels instead of having it off the generator like I do now. But again, it's just convenience, it's easy. I go out, start the generator, fill my tank up with water, I'm done. It takes a little bit more effort to fill the tank up with solar panels, especially with the refrigerator running. I see a lot of these preppers talk about the Jackery or the solar generator. And I don't know if I'm convincing people that that is a really a bad purchase. It's very expensive to start with. And it gives you a very limited amount of energy. 
What we have done with our solar panels, and if you're interested, go to my playlist, you'll see solar panels and it shows you how we hooked them up and how many batteries we have and charge controllers and all that. I've even went through and priced each item, show you that you could buy one solar panel for $80 and a battery for $80 and a charge controller for $100. And it's, so within $500, you got yourself the system. Whereas if you bought a solar generator, you could be up to $800. I've showed you different ways to get electric. You can get electric from your car if you put an inverter on it. You can run your refrigerator off your car. So I've showed you different things that would make it easier for you but we still listen to the preppers and we still believe the preppers are right. I don't see prepper lasting more than their shortest stockpile, whatever that is. But let's just call it food. My guess is gasoline, but let's just call it food. Once you're out of food, you have no plan of action to get any more. Oh, I'm going to go hunting. I hear that one a lot. I'm going to go hunting. I'm going to stockpile and then I'm going to get myself a deer. You got to remember, there's going to be everybody else looking for deer also and there's only so many deer and then you got the people out there who are maybe violent and they see you out there hunting and they don't want you to get their one deer that's out there in the woods so they get you so they can get the deer so i would rather not be out in the woods getting deer that are in limited supply i would rather have a good self-sustaining lifestyle something that can reproduce itself over and over and over again. So last night I got a comment that says, nah, the prepper is a better way to go. Now remember, you're gonna run out of something. Uh, gasoline is the thing I think you're gonna run out of because people don't even understand. I heard one person actually say, I will charge my solar generator with my generator. So you're gonna use gasoline. I mean, what kind of sense does that make? It doesn't even make any sense. Why not just run the generator until you run out of gas? The gas is going to run out, and at which time you're not going to have a, fr a freezer. So all your food is going to spoil. The most you're probably going to be able to store is two weeks worth of gas. That's my best guess, especially if you're running it full time. We don't have to run it full time. Even if I shut my solar panels down, I'd only have to run my generator maybe eight hours a day. I just charge the batteries back up twice a day. And I've proven that because that's what we were doing when we were nomads. We didn't have solar panels. Our generator basically was our power supply that charge the batteries. I got a comment that said, I would rather stockpile than what you're doing, which is the chickens. They were specific about the chickens. They said, I have seen too many farmers now lose their chickens or their cows or their sheep. And so if you lose all your chickens, now you don't have any food. Well, I'd rather have a stockpile of food. Okay, so we've had the chickens for a year and none of them have died yet. Whereas if you had your year's worth of food, you'd already be running out. This is reality. The reality is we've had the chickens for a year. They haven't died. If you're stockpiling your year's worth of food and you were doing this the same time I was doing it, you'd be out of food. Yes, you can claim that you went hunting and got more food, but that's also not taken into consideration that there's gonna be a limited amount of deer. They obviously didn't watch the video where I said I have 300 days worth of food that I can easily go into a backup plan with. So let's assume he's right, my chickens die. It gets too hot, they all have a heat stroke and die today. That's okay. Because yesterday I got, what, 11 eggs. The day before that I probably got another seven, so that's 18 eggs. And today I've gotten four. So that's 22 eggs. <laughs> I was just I'm doing this math in my head. That is the exact amount actually that my incubator holds. So I would take the eggs, because they're still viable. Even though they've been in the fridge, they're still viable because fridge only gets down to about 40 degrees. The eggs will stay vi viable, which means they're still fertile, they haven't died, down to freezing for seven days. Well, th there's yesterday, the day before, and then today, that's all the eggs I need. And within three weeks, I would have little chicks. Those chicks would probably be producing eggs, some of them, by this fall. The rest of them would be producing eggs by next April, probably. So that means I have plenty of food to get me until I'm getting more eggs from the chickens. Of course, then you, you know, you just gotta take into consideration that some of those are gonna be roosters. So out of the 22, I'm gonna have 12 that are hens. The, the other 12, I can butcher, I'll keep some of the roosters. I'll keep one or two of the roosters. That gives me 10 roosters that I could butcher immediately and can up. 
yes, I'd be getting low on food, I agree, but I wouldn't make it. Now, the other thing is, even though Carolyn and I are carnivores and we only eat meat, we do have rice in huge supply. We got about five years worth of rice that we could break into. So really, my stockpile is my backup plan. My primary plan is the chickens. The stockpile is the backup plan. Whereas all the preppers, primary plan is the stockpile. You have no backup plan. And once your stockpile is gone, you're done. It's over. Now, what I have determined from all these people who comment is what I'm doing is too hard. It's too much work. Whereas prepping is easier. And I agree, it probably is. While you're prepping, you get to sit in your air conditioner. You get to go to the store, you get to buy a bunch of stuff. I guess working in a factory or wherever you work is a lot easier than taking care of some chickens. But that's what I'm gathering. Is it just easier? No one really wants to live without the air conditioner. Nobody really wants to get up at five o'clock in the morning and let the chickens out. Nobody really wants to go to, uh, down to put the chickens to bed at 8.30 at night, fill the water tank, feed the chickens, and by nine o'clock you're done and you're coming back in, and by 9.30 you're going to bed. I get it, not a lot of people want to do it. The firewood, that's another thing. I've got enough firewood now to last me the rest of my life. But it was a lot of work to get that much firewood. Buying propane for a little buddy heater is, is probably, in some people's mind, easier. This is, that's just easier. But to compare what the preppers are doing to what I'm doing, I think, I think preppers are really missing the mark. So if you'll click that super thanks button down there, I'd really appreciate it. So if I can inspire you to really think about your future so you can live your dream. Thanks for watching.